Fenton and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Hello again modeling fans. I'm still inside the DB Oster cockpit <laughs> but there is good news. You remember last week in during the video I said that I couldn't put in place the tubular cross structure with the elevator trim winder because I was still waiting for the flaming pilot to dry. Here he is, and I painted him in oils. And the problem with oils is it takes so flipping long to dry. But the good news is, for the most part, he's dry. So there's still a few areas. The silver seems to be a bit reluctant to dry, but he's dry enough now that we can, uh, we can fit him into the cockpit. Before I do that, I was just going to chat to you about pilot figures in general, because it's an area that I've struggled with for many years. I'm not an artist uh, and uh, I have no skill whatsoever in painting these guys. Um, so it's all very well finding, you know, a nicely moulded figure. Uh, you've then got to paint it. And I can usually take a very nicely moulded figure and make it look really bad. <laughs> so what I've done here um, is I've used a 3D print that I've bought from uh, a website company called CG Trader. There are lots of other um, sites that sell 3D graphic files, STL files they're called, and what you do is you buy the file and then you can scale it to whatever size you like or, or the person that prints it can scale it to whatever size you like if you're not printing it yourself. Um, so I bought a uh, a glider pilot from uh, CG Trader and it was drawn by a very talented artist Max Gruter. Now I apologize if I've pronounced his last name wrong but he's very talented and the detail on his figures are superb and some of his newer stuff which seems to be World War II fighter pilot type uh, figures are really excellent you really should go and take a look it's um it's a good idea uh, this figure cost me 39 euros. The file cost me 39 euros. Um, but from that point on, I can scale it to whatever size I like. I need a, a one fifth scale for the Oster. So we had to, or I had to apply a scaling factor to make this figure suitable to that. Um, and you would think you would, the, the drawing comes as a sixth scale, and you would think that you could just take that and scale it to one fifth, and it would be fine. It didn't really work that way. The pilot figure looked really fat, really chunky, and he looked like a, weight, a weightlifter. So what I ended up doing was scaling his height and depth, you know, to the axis to one fifth scale, but actually kept uh, his width at closer to one fifth and a bit. This meant he was a little bit narrower in the face and his thighs and arms and stuff were not quite so bulked up as it were. So that's the scale I went to. Uh, I asked a friend to print it, and one of the things you have to remember when you, you print these things is they are lengthy prints. This one took, I think, two or three days to print in several parts. Um, and the file comes with arms, a torso, and a head. Um, in fact, it comes with several heads, so you could choose what style you want, whether you want him to be wearing a hat or a cap or glasses or, 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 or this sort of thing. I wish there'd been one with uh, a set of cans because that really would have been perfect. But alas, that, that hasn't happened. So whether I go to the trouble of making some cans, headsets, uh, I don't know. That's probably a bridge too far, but it would be kind of fun. So we'll have to see. Anyway, this is the guy all oil painted and done, ready to go. What I've got to do next is, the, is uh, take the gloss off of the head because he's too shiny. So what I'm going to use is some matte acrylic humbral aerosol um, and just put a light dusting over the head and see if that sorts it out. I would also quite like to add a little bit of a bit more highlight and low light to his hair because it's it's a bit brown and you know monochromatic as it were. So we'll try and do something with that. Um, I just thought I'd show you this one. This is quite a nice figure. Uh, this is one, a commercial one you can buy by a very good artist in the UK called Dave Banks. And he does these. Um, and they're beautifully painted. He'll paint them for you. And most of my scale models feature a Dave Banks pilot. 
Uh, I usually fit a little magnet to the bottom of the uh, figure and he's, he's simply held in with a magnet. So any, this guy's one sixth scale. So any of my one sixth scale models, I can drop in the guy and then move him from one model to the other. Obviously, if it's a warbird, he's fine, if it's uh, whatever. Um, I do the same for my small indoor models, which are uh, around a 12th. Um, and I have two or three figures that I can just move from one cockpit to another as I need them. Okay, so let's get cracking with adding some mat to the helmet, uh, to the head and um, see how that looks and then we'll move on to actually fitting the guy into the cockpit. Of course, typically, the matting uh, finish made the pilot's head to look too matte. So I needed to just pick out the shinier areas of the head, the forehead, the bridge of the nose, the top of the cheeks, and some of the hair. For this, I just used Vaseline. So one of the first things to do was to glue the head on and this arm. Now this arm has no effect on the joystick uh, and has no effect on fitting him into the cockpit. However, the other arm does. It reaches and grasps the joystick. So I want to make sure that is in exactly the right position once this guy is fitted into the cockpit. So let's go over to the model and see what we can do. First of all, we need to remove the top section. Let's try and fit the pilot on his seat. Make sure he fits.
So that's quite a short video. Makes a change for me, doesn't it? <laughs> so the pilot is now siliconed into his seat. The seat belt harnesses are also uh, glued to his shoulders um, and some tension pulled on them to make them look right. The, I don't know whether you noticed in the other pictures, the seat belt harnesses in the passenger seat are also glued to the seat back because the weight of the belt and the creases in it don't make it look right it just sort of sticks out a real silk seat belt would would hang and drape so I have pulled it taut and draped it and then siliconed it to the seat so that it's uh, adopting a more realistic pose the, the small map which uh, is just a bit of fun is actually a section of aeronautical chart from the Midlands near where I am here um, and then scaled down to one-fifth and then it's it's laminated with uh, sellotape, clear tape, parcel tape. Then it's cut to size and it's folded like a normal map would be folded um, and then heavily creased on the folds. Then it's glued together as one piece and then that is also silicon to the seat. Um, I couldn't be... <clears throat> I didn't go to the trouble of adding door pockets, which is where the map should probably live. Uh, so it's just less, it's just uh, resting on the seat. Probably not very accurate, but there you go. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, click subscribe and hit the bell thing so that you know when my next video is coming out. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.